Hello, this is Aeson, or Allison, depending on how you met me, and what my introductory was like to you. Hello, and welcome. This video is mainly a <clears throat> reply to and uh, open discussion with uh, with everyone, but mostly a reply to Adam from Lucy Pixel. Um, by the way, if you haven't watched any of Adam Adam's uh, stuff from Lucy Pixel. Please, for the love of God, pause this video, click the link in the description, and watch the video that is linked in there. This, this man has helped me out through so many different things throughout my life, and I am happy I discovered him on YouTube. He has put a voice to a lot of us voiceless artists that are out there on the internet and had brought up so many different discussions and pointed out several things that I wouldn't even know about. But anyways, uh, getting back on topic. This video is a response to traditional schools leave too many people stranded and they don't need to. And I agree with each and every point he makes in these videos. The reason why is because I am... I was a problem child from the minute that I entered first grade. First grade was the time when I realized I was not like the other students, and that's not some cool, edgy way of me saying, oh, I'm not like other kids. No. No. Um, for a good part of my childhood, my parents did not know what was going on with me and what was uh, happening to uh, put it bluntly. Um, I am diagnosed with dyslexia, ADHD, and PTSD. Now, it's kind of obvious that I do not have a script for this, so I'm kind of going off the cuff, so I am so sorry for anyone who's listening to this and wants a structured video, but I cannot provide that. Not in this video. I'm just going to talk freely about my experience with the traditional education system, and even special ed, because, well... Special Ed is also a part of the traditional education system. Now, during first grade, I found out that I have dyslexia. Words were like hieroglyphs or a different language that I could not grasp or understand and it was frustrating for because even though there was that whole No Child Left Behind program that was employed in, um, into the school system, I believe in the early 2000s, I was not lucky. I dealt with teachers from first grade up until the beginning of third grade that would basically have a teacher-parent conference with my parents and would tell me that I did not apply myself enough 
into the education program. I got distracted easily. I couldn't focus on the words and even when I could read the words, I wasn't up to the standards of what the school wanted. And it bummed me out. It bummed me out quite a bit. Because during this time when you are so young and so vulnerable, all you want to do is live up to the expectation of your peers. Or at least that's how I felt when I was a kid. It wasn't until I was in third grade third grade, I did not have a grasp on how to read, write, um, uh, sorry if you heard that in the background, something fell, fell off the wall, but anyways, moving forward, I did not have a grasp on how to read or write. It wasn't until I met a teacher by the name of Miss Allen which, by the way, uh, that's not her real name, and I'm using a different name for her, but she was my guiding light up until I believe it was either the fifth or sixth grade, I cannot remember clearly, but she was the one who got me to read and write. She actually sat down personally with me to actually help me understand and read things and how to break down words and get them through to me. So that way, when I reached adulthood, I wouldn't be this flubbering, you know, adult that couldn't read or write. And it was difficult. It was very much difficult for her, and I know it was. But she was the one who got me to read manga and where I found the love of creating beautiful pieces of artwork. And where I found how to enjoy the creative process, even if you think your ideas are dumb or stupid. She loved what I created for her and these small little comics that I would make for her. She also got me to read Fablehaven, a book that was way above my reading level during the time, even at the fifth grade reading level. She... She was the one who pushed me forward, and I cannot thank her enough for it. She was the one who was dedicated to her job, and that's what we need more in the school systems. Anyways, um, moving forward middle school years I cannot pinpoint or anything like that I know I went to two different middle schools one was a, a private middle school which honestly was a joke and one was a public middle school which was even a bigger joke all of them had the same structural sort of uh, learning system. Essentially, what the teachers would do would just set down packets or these spiral, spiral clipboard notebooks or something like that. I can't remember the names off the top of my head that had like almost 20 or so different different subject matters and such like that that would that we would have to do we would have to do 10 pages a day and any pages that you didn't finish that day well there's the after school program for that and 
the teachers could give less of a shit if you completed it or not. Because we have the after school program. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, a lot went wrong. Because during those times, those teachers that would teach with those types of packets were also the ones that were teaching the after school programs. And even then, they could give less of a shit. It's obvious that they didn't care if one or two students didn't make it through the school year because of the fact that, well, the rest of the class is going, you know, is going places. Why should I care if, you know, one or two students aren't sort of do? During this time, I kind of give, gave up. Like, don't get me wrong, there were times where something would just spark a fire in me, whether it was history, mathematics, hell, even science, learning all these different topics that were underneath those umbrellas. Those sparked a fire in me because I knew somehow deep inside that those could be useful for whatever type of world I was creating during my, uh, well, <laughs> during my creative art artist's endeavors, I guess is the best way to put it. By the time I reached middle school, or not middle school, haha, <laughs> Sorry, it is almost 5.30 in the morning as I'm recording this, so forgive me if I sound really tired and just manic, I guess is the way to put it, unhinged maybe, but this is a topic I'm very much passionate about and I want to get everything out. But during high school, by the time I reached high school, I was broken, for the lack of better words. Because there's only so many times you can have these parent-teacher conferences with your parents listening to the teachers and the teachers telling your parents that oh, it's, you know, it's your kid, they're not implying themselves as much as they should, even though they're trying their damnedest, it's not enough. It's not enough for the school board, it's not enough for the education system, it's not enough for the government to see your kid as useful. As someone who's a people pleaser, as someone who's a uh, go-getter, who loves to learn about all different types of, you know, topics, conversations, it's soul crushing, for the lack of better words. It, it's soul crushing, depressing, and honestly, it still affects me to this day as a 25 year old living in today's society. Anyways, when I reached high school, I essentially gave up. If I fail, I fail. If I somehow get through this, then 
Oh boy, isn't it a fucking miracle? That's the mindset I went into as soon as I reached high school. And that's when I met another teacher who actually gave a shit about their job. And actually cared enough about all the students that came through her door. We're going to call this teacher Miss Cole. Cole was the sassy, I am going to be the parent figure that you may have never had sort of teacher. Any dream that you have, if you have your mind set to it and you're willing to put in the work and the sacrifices needed for it, then holla fucking Lilia, I am going to cheer you on kind of teacher. When I met her, I was hiding behind a mask for a good long while of my high school years. During those years, I skipped a lot of school. There would be days, almost an entire week, I would miss school. But whenever I came back, of course she did express that, you know, she was disappointed I missed so much, but she was always happy to see me back. And that, I feel like, was enough of a kick in the ass to make me realize that this teacher, unlike a lot of the rest of the teachers that I had went through throughout my, you know, schooling life, that actually gave a shit. And didn't see us students as glorified paychecks. As, you know, they saw us as people. As the future. She saw us as individuals. I think... The day that she sat me down for the tenth time, keep in mind I was still wearing that mask and, you know, trying to play it off as, you know, no, 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 I think school's important and all that stuff and what have you. Um, she sat me down and went, listen, Asen, we need to talk about your dropping grades and you missing so much school. There is so many missing credits. You're going to have to be a super senior. Now, for those of you who do not know what a super senior is, that's when you take your senior year and you basically do it again. And... That's when I realized that even she couldn't, you know, she couldn't essentially make the school, you know, change its ways. It's do or die, like Adam said in his video. That was enough of a kick in the ass for me to realize that I need to straighten up my act. And that if any of the work that she put into me was going to mean anything, I need to get my ass into gear and start doing something. She basically made this huge program for people like me who were struggling with school and she flipped it on its head and basically made it into a um, a um, trying to remember what, what it was officially called 
basically a life sucks now what sort of program and it taught a lot of us that just because life is sucking now what are we going to do about it to make it better she was able to convince the school instead of like putting so much emphasis on the test credits or school scores and such like that that it would basically be us uh, oh what's the word basically going through a simulation of what adult life would be like you know how to apply for a job how to do our own taxes how to uh, buy groceries uh, how to budget out how much groceries do we need to get how many uh, you know how many hours we have to put into a job oh and not only that but the students who already had a job we can bring in our uh, pay stubs of how many hours we worked and that would uh, contribute to the credits needed in order to graduate. When I said this teacher was a kick-ass beacon of hope, I really mean it. And honestly, the education system needs more teachers like that and less of the fluff that Adam explains in his video. Like, she made me realize that yes, I can actually make money off of my artwork. That yes, I can actually, you know, start a small business and start getting the ball rolling granted it took me years after graduating to actually do something with that but it's better to do it late than never to do it at all and to say I'm going through life by the uh skin of my teeth is uh is a little bit of an understatement but yeah Adam if you're watching this video and listening to it thank you and to everyone else please for the love of god go and check out Adam Duff he is so amazing and honestly even if you're not a creative person, he has a lot of videos that just uplift the soul and just help you get through some of the most toughest shit in life. It's honestly refreshing and helpful in so many ways. Anyways, I'm gonna stop chatting off your ear and I'm gonna go the fuck to bed. So, everyone, have a wonderful night, get some water in your system, and please go the fuck to bed. <laughs>